actually, there you go. That is middle age, fringe veteran. That does make me feel <laughs> veteran. Christ, I'm 34. But it's true, it's 10 years since I did my first Edinburgh show. 10 years. Uh, 10 years ago, I did a show with a comedian called Rod Gilbert, um, who, as some of you probably know, very sadly went on to have a better career than me. Um, <laughs> In those days, this is to put it in context, how old I feel in Edinburgh. Um, my venue was a pub, and I would be scared of being ID'd. I was not always allowed... I used to take a passport with me, because I wasn't always allowed in. So that's very rare that that happens now. If I go to a pub now and I don't get in, I've gone in the morning uh, again. Because <laughs> in Scotland, that joke doesn't resonate at all. There's <laughs> no time of day or night. I've been asked one time for ID in the past year. And even then, it wasn't like some sort of pub raid. It was trying to buy wine in Marks and Spencer. And the guy himself was clearly 10 years younger than me. That was insulting. He couldn't have been 20. He said, have you got any proof that you're over 18? I said, well, yeah, I'm in Marks and Spencer, mate. <laughs> I, uh, that's clearer do you want my situation in life to be. So I start looking through cardigans, going, that's good value, but it'll be good quality as well if I know my Marks and Sparks. I, <laughs> Well, that made me shiver, even saying that as a joke. That's one of the few rules that I live my life by. If you start saying Marks and Sparks, time to shoot yourself in the face. <laughs> I, am... I am. I'm a dad. I, I've got a, not just a dad, I have a four-year-old kid now. I'm old enough to start saying things like Marks and Sparks. Four-year-old. My boy is old enough to have formed an idea of what I do for a living, which is worrying when you think what it is. He's got a thing where, um, I want to leave the house like, tonight for a gig. He says, be funny, daddy. It's <laughs> that's really cute. Also, absolutely chilling, of course. <laughs> <laughs> be funny, daddy. Have a sustainable income, daddy, in these uncertain times. Might as well wave a little flag saying, will there be Christmas this year? <laughs> or is it one of those leap years you talked about last year? Um, it's old enough to be setting a better example. I should be setting a better example. I was aware last year I started to drink too much, because uh, it's quite nerve-wracking, of course, doing stand-up, so you find ways around it. My cunning solution to that was to drink heavily, uh, and so I started, um, I know it's not ideal, really, it was a definitely, it was a problem. There's a period last year, this time last year, where pff, I'd become, there's not really a word for it, but like a shopaholic with booze, uh, and I, um, <laughs> it's nice when some people laugh at that joke, it cost me a year of my life, really. Um, <laughs> I started having a little bit of wine before a gig, which is fine, but then it would be a, a half a bottle, nearly a, nearly a bottle of wine it was at one point before a gig. And I would do that religiously. Um, by religiously, I mean without really thinking it through in detail. Uh, and so, um, <laughs> but of course, drinking too much makes you uh, twitchy and paranoid. You start to feel that you're not like other people, and, um, which again may be true, but you don't want to feel like that in everyday life. Uh, I've had a lot of failed attempts to interact with my fellow humans. Uh, this is fine. This kind of thing is fine. It's just outside of the, the comfort of a theatre. Like, I was on the underground in London, got off. There was an escalator. And as I got on the escalator, without meaning to, I got between these two mates. One of them was walking very fast, and one of them was dawdling. So uh, as we filtered, I suddenly between these two guys. And the guy in front continued talking over his shoulder as if he was still talking to his mate. But he wasn't. It was now me. And uh, in fact, his mate was miles back. So the guy, and it's quite personal information. He's, he's going off at his girlfriend. Debs, or it could have been a wife, but it seemed like a girlfriend. Tell you what annoys me about Debs. Something else Debs does. Oh, I tell you what, and so on. And I felt like I had to start going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically filling in for the friend that he believed was really there. Yeah, yeah. And for about a minute, I got away with it. It was going really well. Uh, yeah, he didn't look around once. There's a bit where I got so cocky, I even went, oh, Debs. Yeah, it was, um, oh, Debs. It's not bad, because I've never met any of the people in this equation before. But, of course, the moment was coming where the guy was going to find out that it hadn't been... I didn't know how to dig myself out of this situation, having got myself into it. And so, of course, the moment did come. We got to the top of the escalator. The guy said, should we go for a pint? Swung round, and for the first time he realised, you can imagine the scene, instead of his mate, who was halfway down the escalator still, it was me. And so there were, I had five seconds to get myself out of the situation with dignity. Didn't really work out. We just looked at each other in silence, and I said, we're friends now. <laughs> uh, but in the guy's opinion, we weren't. <laughs> It's obviously a joke. He was terrified. He said, no, we are not. And he actually ran away with his real friend, as if I was going to come after him, going, come on, what about our friendship? Let's get a DVD. Have you seen Marley and me? There's ever such a nice dog in it. Um, <laughs> right, I'm off in a minute. Always leave them wanting more. That was the piece of advice my uncle gave me. Always leave them wanting more. That's how he lost his job in disaster relief. Uh, but it's... Um, <laughs> it's I saved that one for last. My name's Mark Watson. Thanks very much.